ABC 57 News 19. Fiction touches so many people's lives. It's not a it's not decided by class or income or race. It's it touches everyone. County jails in Indiana are overwhelmingly full of people on drug related charges. On tonight's Beyond the Badge, we're taking you inside the Kosciuszko County Jail, where its chemical addiction program is proactively facing the issue and helping people get a second chance. ABC 57's Brenda Coopson shows us how, with the help of the community, a group is learning everything from how to build a resume to fighting addiction. What did you guys learn about synergy? I've had a struggle with um, drug addiction for, I'd say, 20 years. It's just a life that I'm, I'm completely done with. I feel like dads tend to step back a little bit. I know, Eric, you've mentioned a couple times with your kids that you've done that. Being a part of this program, to me, means that I'm actually able to build a connection with the outside world. Like that boss knows that if you're running a machine at a factory, you probably have a pretty good concept, you have an understanding. Before I came into this program, the only connection that I had with the world was drug-based. And coming in here, I found out that the community doesn't just want to help me, but they want to give me a support system from when I leave here. What he found was the things that he was passionate about really wasn't going to be taught in a classroom. Addiction touches so many people's lives. It's not, a, it's not decided by class or income or race. It's it touches everyone. Courtney Jenkins is the coordinator of the Jail Chemical Addiction Program, or JCAP, within the Kosciuszko County Jail. Mm -hmm. A, C, E, C, or Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know why that came out. It's a drug rehab program located inside our jail. Uh, and during those four months, we, we concentrate on mental health, life skills, addiction classes, and religion. What do you, what do you suppose they're talking about here? The time of year. Yeah. Yeah. This program is built around hope, hope and um, how to take your past struggles and transform them into hope. Just because someone has made bad choices in their life, it doesn't mean they can't overcome it. Many of us have made bad choices in our lives. They may not have ended us up in jail, but they were they were not things that we're proud of. The men and women in JCAP spend six to eight hours a day in classes. And it keeps us on track, it keeps us more accountable. 50% of their schedule is recovery classes. The other 50% is life skills classes like this parenting class. We're taking advantage of all of the benefits and the talents that are in that room. I look forward to coming to classes because I do not only better myself, but I learn how to better the people around me. I look forward to being able to go out there and be the parent that I wish I had growing up. Uh, I have four little girls. Um, they're my everything. And um, the more time I'm getting sober under my belt, the more I'm learning about them and the more I'm learning how much of an impact I can make on their lives. You don't realize and, and what you have until you don't have it and you know until it's too late and um, just this opportunity to better myself to teach them to, to become a better me for them is is a blessing County jails in the state of Indiana are dealing with a problem they haven't before. With a jail population of about 234 people, between 80 to 83 percent of inmates are in on drug related charges. And Sheriff Dukes tells me that's no different than any other jail. We had two overdoses two weeks ago here at the county jail and, and everybody was like, hey, well, Sheriff, what is going on? How could there be an, an overdose in, in, a, in a county jail? People go through body scanners during booking and it's a tool they use daily here at the jail. It's this constant um, um, proactive stance that we take to, to try to limit drugs from coming into the jail. But when 83% of people are in here for drug related issues, they try every day to get drugs into the jail. Sheriff Dukes tells me they're dealing with pure fentanyl in the county, along with heroin and meth, and it's causing overdoses. I never thought in my law enforcement career that I would ever see where meth is cheaper than marijuana. And it is absolutely killing our, our, our families. And, and it's not just the addicted person, it's the moms and the dads and the, and the sons and the daughters and the grandparents um, that are all affected by this. But through JCAP, we have a 59% success rate that the addicted person gets out of incarceration and stays clean in our communities. We have 30 organizations and businesses that come in every week, every week inside our jail 
and uh, teach, mentor, train. It's honestly, it's shocking. I didn't know that the people in the community actually pulled together like this. But coming in here, you actually learn that, wow, there are there's someone out there who wants me to do good. Like, it just, it's, it's shocking, and it's, it means the world to me. We're giving them the confidence. We're giving them the training. And, I, and I've said this once, and I'll say it again. Deputy sheriffs, jail officers, we fall back on our training. That's how we survive in, in this world. So if we're going to train our deputy sheriffs and, and they're falling back and our jail officers are on our training, why are we not doing that to the, to the addicted person who is wanting help? I feel like it um, gives us drive and hope to achieve our future goals. Um, it helps us make uh, goals that are actually achievable. And um, to be surrounded by these guys, it's uh, a brotherhood that I never had before. I became a better person in general. I've learned a lot of tools and ethics and morals that I didn't know I had. I brought a lot of confidence back in myself. What is it like for you as the coordinator to see, you know, these inmates go through the process and then go back out into society and get jobs and go back to their families? It is incredibly rewarding and um, for me, it gives me a great deal of hope. My son is a heroin and meth addict and so I want him to recover. I want to see him living the life that I see our graduates living. When I get those text messages that say, I just want you to know that I celebrated Christmas for the first time with my family in five years, and it was so good. Um, just being able to, to witness those little milestones for them that are actually huge, um, that that's what it means for me. I can only get out and, and, and become this better person that I keep talking about. I can only become a better father. I can only just show them how grateful they are to me and how much they mean to me. If you're watching, I love you, girl. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> I can finally say that um, I'm going to make my mom proud. Uh, my mom's put her whole heart in, in me, and um, I feel like I failed her a lot. So um, I feel like at the end of this program and my journey at work release, I will make my mom proud. I want to be a counselor. I feel like all the support and help that I've gotten here to better myself, I just feel it wouldn't be right if I wasn't able to go out there and do the same for my community. In Kosciuszko County, I'm Brenda Coopson, ABC 57 News. This group of men will graduate from JCAP in two weeks. Towards the end of the program, businesses from the community come in and do interviews, preparing them for a job and life outside the bars.